Hi everyone, and welcome to the Ableton Live Survival Guide, and the first part of the EQ3 tutorial. Today I'll be showing you a small tip with a huge impact on your sound. I'll be showing you how to control and bend your bass to your will with one of the simplest and most powerful effects in Ableton Live, the EQ3. Let's hear what we're making today. Now, for the record, I would never recommend anyone using the EQ3 as an equalizer, but I will be showing you how to manipulate it to be used as what I think is the best multiband compressor in Ableton Live, and show you why I think the EQ3 doesn't get the credit it deserves. I use this method in nearly every project I make. I'll get into how it works in a moment, but let's start with the basics. First, we need a signal to process. In this case, we have a bass playing on our MIDI channel, so now we only need an EQ3. Let's solo our bass one time and drag the EQ3 to our MIDI channel from audio effects. We will only be using the three toggling buttons and the two crossover knobs for this tutorial. The EQ3 is divided into three sections, low, mid and high. If we want to solo one band, we'll mute the other two by toggling them off. Let's solo the low band by toggling the mid and high band off. Our bass low end information is now soloed. If we look at the low frequency crossover knob at the bottom left of the EQ3, we'll see that it's set to 250 Hz. This tells us that the top of our low band is set to 250 Hz, so we only hear from here and down. Let's try and bring it down to around 150 Hz and hear what it sounds like. This is how our bass sounds from 150 Hz and down. Let's leave that for a moment and solo our high band. We'll do this by toggling the low band off and your high band on. Per default, the EQ3's high band is set to 2.5 kHz, so unless you have a really bright or distorted bass, you shouldn't be able to hear much right now, as this number sets the bottom of the frequency range for the high band. So let's just turn our high frequency crossover knob to 350 Hz, so we can hear the top of our bass. Now we only hear from 350 and up. You may ask now, we have a mid band, so where is the mid frequency crossover knob? There isn't one. And that's because the range of the mid band will extend between the low frequency and the high frequency settings, meaning our mid is now from 150 Hz to 350 Hz. Let's hear the mid band one time by toggling the high band off and the mid band on. Okay, we now have our frequency set and it's time to turn all the bands back on. Our bass should sound exactly as when we opened our project. And now for the fun part of turning this into a powerful and versatile multiband compressor. Even though Ableton Live has its own multiband compressor, anyone who have ever used it has to agree that it's not the best out there. And that's why we're making our own. Go ahead and drop the compressor from audio effects next to your EQ3 and turn off the makeup gain. I recommend enabling the activity view as well. We are now going to group the compressor and the EQ3 by holding shift and clicking the gray bar around both plugins. Now press Command G to group them. If we show the chain list, we'll get a third window where we'll see one bar called chain. Press that bar and double it two times by pressing Command D twice. From top to bottom, we'll now name these chains high, mid and low. So let's click the top chain and press Command R, name this one high, Command R the middle and name it mid and vice versa with the low. We've now tripled our signal and we want to divide them into three sections. So if we're on the low channel, we'll toggle off mid and high, so we'll only hear lows from the channel named low. And let's go to the mid channel and turn off high and low, so we'll only hear mids on the mid channel. And in the high channel, turn off mid and low. We now have a multiband compressor. If you want, you can save this preset so you can skip everything we just did and load it up anytime. Let me show you its features. Let's start by playing our bass and soloing the low chain by pressing the solo button. Now just as before, we only hear our low end from 150Hz and down, as shown in the EQ3, but this time we have a compressor next to it. I like when basses tend to be direct and clear in tone, all the way through a note. Let's compress it. I'll turn the threshold down to around minus 18 dB with 3 in ratio. Let's unsolo our low band from the chain list and hear it with the other chains enabled. Maybe we'll turn the low end up a notch with the compressor's out parameter, just by 1.5 dB. 
We've now compressed and controlled our base low-end information, much more consistent and coherent in tone. From the very beginning, I've been annoyed by the click sound in the high band at the start of each note. It's way too loud. So let's solo our high band and see if we can comp it down. The clicks are very easy to spot if we've engaged activity view in the compressor. So let's just bring our threshold down to around halfway into the clicks. Because we only want to affect the clicks and nothing else. Let's bring our attack down to 1, so our compressor will catch the click a little earlier on. Nice. The clicks are lowered in volume and they sound great. Last but not least, let's comp the mid band one time as well. So same thing. Highlight and solo the mid chain and comp it to your liking. I'll go with minus 28 dB threshold, 3 in ratio and plus 2 dB in out. Just to flatten it a little. Now, these values will of course vary depending on your bass or whatever you're applying it to. This is strictly for demonstration. But we've now compressed our bass in three spectral sections. Let's unsolo everything and hear it in full effect. Then we'll toggle our multiband compressor off and on to hear the difference. Wonderful. The tone of the bass is much clearer. There are no sudden clicks and it stays in the same place throughout the mix. Our bass is finally in control. A quick side note, you might want to change the parameters of the multiband compressor depending on your signal. This can be done by changing the value of one of the crossover buttons. Right click it and click copy value to siblings. And that value will be posted on all of our EQ3s in the group. This is really important since we have three EQ3s. One for low, one for mid and one for high. So if we don't click copy value to siblings, their frequencies will either overlap or have a gap, which we don't want, because we'll either get too much of a set range of frequencies or completely miss out on some of the signal. So basically, you want the same values on all three EQ3's crossover knobs in your chain list. In this example, I use the bass and the Ableton Live stock compressor. But this module is very versatile. You can use it on your master channel for mastering, on a vocal for de or on a drum bus for mixing. And you can use any compressor you want and turn your favorite compressor into a multiband compressor with this technique. But that's it for part one of the Ableton Survival Guides EQ3 tutorial. Thank you for watching everyone and let me know if this worked out for you. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Bye.